What are Lewis structures? Lewis structures are two-dimensional representations of chemical bonds. Electrons are represented by dots, and the shared electrons show bonds. There are other common names for these, such as electron dot structures, dot structures, or Lewis dot structures. To draw a Lewis structure for an element, use the element symbol to represent the nucleus and core electrons. Determine the number of electrons in the valence shell and draw them around the symbol, placing one on each side before doubling up. Oxygen is in the sixth main group. Place six electrons. How do you draw Lewis structures for molecules? For compounds with only two elements, arrange them symmetrically. Put the C in the middle and the four H's around it. Determine the number of valence electrons for each atom. Carbon is in the fourth group, has four electrons. Hydrogen is the first group, one electron. Draw the valence electrons. Do not double up on a side where the bond is going to be formed. When atoms have eight, or two for hydrogen, the structure is complete. Carbon now has eight electrons that it's sharing. Each hydrogen has two electrons that it's sharing. Notice that both the carbon and the hydrogen get to count the electrons they are sharing together. Here's another example. Arrange the atoms symmetrically. Determine the number of valence electrons. Five for nitrogen, one for hydrogen. Draw the valence electrons, making sure you don't double up where a bond is going to form. And check the structure to see if the atoms have full valences. Eight for the nitrogen, and two for each of the hydrogen atoms. The structure is now complete. A pair of electrons not being shared is a lone pair. These are important and they must be shown. A pair of electrons being shared is a bonding pair. Both atoms can count the electrons in the bonding pair. How are molecules with multiple bonds drawn? Begin with the same steps. Arrange the atoms symmetrically. Determine the number of valence electrons for each element, four for carbon and six for oxygen. Arrange the valence electrons so they don't double up where a bond is going to form. When the atoms have eight, two for hydrogen, the structure is done. Currently, the carbon only has six electrons. Each oxygen atom only has seven. When the previous steps do not result in atoms having full valence shells, move electrons that are single on adjacent atoms in to form a double bond. The atoms must be adjacent to form a double bond. Now the carbon atom has eight valence electrons, as do each of the oxygen atoms.
Here's another example. Arrange the atoms. Determine the valence electrons. Draw the valence electrons. Do not double up where two atoms are going to bond. Check to see if the structure is complete. Hydrogen has two. It's okay. But the carbon and nitrogen atom each only have six. They are not full yet. When the previous steps do not result in full valence shells, move two unpaired electrons on adjacent atoms to bond together. Repeat this until all atoms have full valence shells. Now all valence shells are full. Double bonds are shorter and stronger than single bonds. Triple bonds are even shorter and stronger than double bonds. How are Lewis structures drawn for larger molecules? When there are more than two elements, how do you know what order to arrange them in? COOH is a carboxylic acid. An example of this will be shown in a future slide. Hydrogen and halogen atoms cannot go in the middle because they can only bond to one other atom at a time. Write the inside atoms in the order they appear in the chemical formula. Write the outside atoms around the atom they are written next to in the formula. Here's an example. The C2O are go in the middle. Write them in the order they are shown in the chemical formula. The H's must go on the outside. Write them next to the atom they are written next to in the chemical formula. Once the atoms have been arranged according to the previous rules, finish the Lewis structure. Determine the number of valence electrons. Draw the valence electrons. Do not double up where two atoms are going to bond. Check to see if the atoms each have eight, except for hydrogen, which can only hold two. Here's another example. This example contains the COOH, the carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acids are always written in the same manner. Both oxygen atoms are bonded to the carbon atom, with the hydrogen bonded to one of the oxygen atoms. Next, write the other middle atoms, followed by the outside atoms. After the atoms have been arranged, complete the Lewis structure. Determine the valence number of electrons. Draw the electrons.
remembering not to double up on a side where a bond is going to form. Check to see if this structure is complete. Some of the atoms are full, but one carbon and one oxygen each only have seven electrons. Therefore, they must double bond. Now all valent shells are currently full. If two atoms are not adjacent and have single electrons that are not being bonded, sometimes you can move a hydrogen atom to a different location. This way, two atoms that are adjacent can double bond. Here's an example. Each carbon has four and each hydrogen has one valence electron. The carbon atoms on either end of the molecule are not full. They each only have seven electrons. However, they cannot double bond because they are not adjacent. If a hydrogen is moved, now there are two carbon atoms right next to each other which can double bond. The move of the hydrogen is not prohibited by the given information. Our molecule still has three carbons and six hydrogens. How are polyatomic ions bonded? Polyatomic ions are a group of atoms that are covalently bonded to each other. They overall have a net charge. For example, ammonium plus one or sulfate negative two. A cation is a positively charged ion, which results from the loss of electrons. Draw the Lewis structure as we have been. However, the plus one charge on the cation lets us know that we can remove one electron. In this case, there's no choice but to double up on the side where there is a hydrogen being bonded. There was no other place to put the fifth electron for nitrogen. Hydrogen's electron is removed to result in the plus one overall charge. The charge must be shown when this is done. Check to see that the structure is complete. Each hydrogen atom shares two electrons, while the nitrogen atom shares eight. A polyatomic anion is a negatively charged ion, as in SO4, negative two. Begin the Lewis structure the same way, by arranging the atoms and determining the number of electrons. The negative two charge means that we can add two electrons to the final structure. Again, in this case, we had no choice but to double up on sides where there will be a bond. When there is doubling where there already will be a bond, put the six electrons from oxygen around the oxygen only. Don't add more to the bond that already has two. We get to add two additional electrons to result in the overall negative two charge. And finally, check to see that the structure is complete. Each oxygen atom is sharing eight electrons as is the sulfur atom.